How do? My name is Andrew Hancock and I am a VMware technical architect from Yorkshire in the United Kingdom. I have worked with VMware since their birth in 1998. So that has been over 24 years I have been working with the VMware product catalog. Some of my close colleagues say if you cut Andy in half it reads VMware like a stick of rock from Blackpool. I have now written 134 articles and recorded 30 hours of VMware vSphere videos for Experts Exchange and received 40 Experts Exchange awards over the last 10 years working with the Experts Exchange community. I am currently the overall number one point earner in the Hall of Fame at Experts Exchange. I am honoured to have been accepted into the VMware vExpert programme since 2011 and more recently made a VMware vExpert Pro for the last three years. So welcome back to another Hancock's VMware Half Hour and this is going to be a shorty. This is going to be a short one. And I want to show you in this video how we create a cluster. I'm not going to enable uh, VMware HA on the cluster. I'm not going to enable VMware v, uh, DRS on the cluster yet uh, or enable vSAN because the networking at the moment is not set up for that. But there is a requirement that we enable and create a cluster for the native key provider to function correctly for the vTPM device that we need in our Windows 11 virtual machine in our next video. So how do we create a cluster? And what is a cluster? A cluster is a group of resources. It's no different really to a resource pool. Uh, so a cluster contains one or more hosts or two hosts really because a cluster of one host really is possibly a little bit silly. Um, so it's a pool of CPU and it's a pool of memory. Now, there have been a few questions that have come up on Experts Exchange about a cluster. And although it's a pool of resources, it doesn't mean that a virtual machine on ESXi001 can use the resources on ESXi002. So let me give an example. Um, on this particular host, we have total memory of 16 gig. And on this host, we also have 16 gig. So that doesn't mean that when we put these into the cluster, our total combined memory is 32 gig. But that doesn't mean to say that we can create a virtual machine which has access to 32 gig of memory. It can borrow 16 gig of memory from ESXi002 and add it to the virtual machine that's running on ESXi001. So your virtual machine is still bound by those boundaries of where it actually exists. So if you have, for instance, eight logical processors in ESXi001 and you have 16 gig of memory in this particular host, you can't create a 16 CPU, 32 gig virtual machine. It can't go off and borrow those resources from ESXi002. You are bound by those physical constraints of your host. So just to get that clear, because there are a few questions that came up that um, can a virtual machine on a host in a cluster use the CPUs on another host in the cluster? And that's not how clustering functions. So to create a cluster, we're going to click the data center and we're going to click new cluster. And I'm going to give it a name EE cluster. Now, what a cluster does allow us to do. Uh, later on uh, is enable things like VMware DRS, which is dynamic resource scheduling, um, which will automatically move the virtual machine. Um, when a virtual machine, when the host that the virtual machine is on cannot deliver its resources. So, for instance, if you have in our particular case, a virtual machine on ESXi001 that demands eight gigs and there's not eight gig available, it will look through the hosts in the cluster and automatically transfer that host to another host that can deliver those resources through vMotion. vSphere HA, vSphere High Availability, 
is a function whereby if you have an uncontrolled shutdown of a host, so a host crashes, or you the power fails on that particular host, virtual machines will be restarted automatically on other hosts in the cluster. And I'll show that later um, when we do some videos on vSphere DRS and vSphere HA. Now networking has networking and data stores has to be set up correctly for that. So for the moment, I wouldn't worry too much about manage all the hosts in the cluster with a single image. That's actually about um, uh, vSphere, vSphere Lifecycle Manager, which gives you the ability to update and patch hosts. So name EE cluster, and obviously vSAN is uh, VMware's uh, hyperconverged infrastructure of providing SAN-based technology on each host. And we'll, and we'll discuss that later. So I'm just going to click next, followed by, and again, it's asking me what the version I want to set up. Again, you know, this is for vSphere Lifecycle Manager. So I'm going to click next and I'm going to click finish. So very quickly, you will start to see that it creates a cluster. And under E Data Center, um, we will have a EE cluster appear. And then what we will do, okay, so can you therefore, you can see the EE cluster and you can see the icons there that look a little bit different, uh, a group of PCs. So now we're going to add hosts to our cluster. Now we could use the cluster quick start wizard. So I could click add and I could you, I'm going to type in the FQDNs of the hosts. Followed by the root username and password. And I'm going to click on another host and I'm going to add 002. Now those red things that are popping up there, um, that is last pass, last pass, which I think has just done an update. So it looks a bit different. So I'm going to, so I've added the hosts. I could have actually ticked the box, use the same credentials for all hosts. So in my particular case, they are the same. Probably, um, in terms of security, cyber security essentials, cyber security insurance, if those things that you have to meet within your organization, probably having the same password for each host is probably not a very good idea. So click next. So it's telling us that our hosts have warnings and it's telling us that one host is being managed by vCenter system with 182.138, which in fact actually is this current vCenter service. I'm not quite sure. Maybe there's an FQDN issue there somewhere. Uh, so I'm going to click next and see whether or not the warnings go away. Um, not going to worry about it at the moment. I'm going to click next and I'm going to click finish. And hopefully what it's going to do, um, it's now complaining that it can't add it's saying that it can't add the host to the cluster because the name already exists which is a bit interesting add standalone host uh maybe oh sorry yeah i've got i'm not reading existing hosts not new hosts my apologies Okay, existing hosts followed by next. This new. Let's try that again. So let's click add. Let's just click X and X out of this. I think what's going on here, I've got a feeling that last pass is that's just I think, last pass i think okay i'm just gonna log out last pass is trying to force passwords in here so that's just basically so my apologies anyway so existing hosts next uh okay we've got a warning here the host has a powered on VM. Of course it has a powered on VM because it's actually got vCenter server running on it. So we click next, followed by next, followed by finish. 
and you can see very, very quickly that both hosts, ESXi001 and ESXi002, which is in maintenance mode, um, is being added to the cluster. So we now have a cluster, an EE cluster, in the EE data center of ESXi001 and ESXi002. And what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to basically exit maintenance mode on that particular host. And of course, we've still got the issue about security that we'll, we'll talk about later when we do another video on that. And we've also got syslog issue as well that needs to be resolved on this server as well. And you may have noticed, keen eye amongst you may have noticed that a couple of uh, uh, virtual machines have been automatically deployed um, for the cluster services. Um, and if you actually basically have a little look at VMs, you will also see that you've got these VCLS virtual machines that are also now running on, on each host as well, which are part of the uh, cluster services as well. So we now have a cluster um, and we've created the cluster at this early stage because we need to use the native key provider and we need to use the native key provider for the next video on deploying Windows 11. So again, a quick one. All I wanted to show you in this particular video is how we create a cluster in VMware vSphere v, uh, vCenter 8 or vSphere 8. Uh, so thank you very much for watching and please come back soon and I can show you how to deploy and install uh, Windows 11 on VMware vSphere 8. So thank you very much for watching and goodbye.